Remember the movie Castaway? A guy gets stranded on an island for four years? Guess what? That can happen for real. I'm gonna show you where. Today we're looking at islands that don't and possibly have never had any permanent residents. There are 900,000 islands globally and only around 16,000 are inhabited. That means there's 884,000 islands that are void of homo sapiens. That also means there's about 800,000 places that don't have Starbucks. I know, scary, right? A lot of those islands are just small rock islands that couldn't support life past maybe birds and insects. Today, I'm gonna show you 10 islands that probably could have people, but don't. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Rat Island, the Aleutian Islands, Alaska. Now this one is known as Rat Island, but it has another name. Hawadax Island. This island was formerly known as Rat Island until 2012 when they changed it to Hawadax. It got the name Rat Island when a Russian ship, which was sailing around the world, came across the island. When they landed, they found nothing but rats. It, there was rats everywhere. The entire island was infested. So they just marked it down as Rat Island and moved on with their lives. You're probably wondering how the rats got to this island. I mean, it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's an invasive species. Oddly enough, they know how the rats got there. It was a Japanese shipwreck sometime around 1780. They got off the boat when it started going down. I guess they swam to the island and started breeding. And that island stayed infested all those years until 2007. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service decided it was time to get rid of the rats. So their first plan was to airdrop a bunch of rat poison for the most part. Now they expected to have some non-targeted mortality as they call it, but that exceeded their predictions. I guess a whole bunch of birds got a hold of the rat poison. That included 46 bald eagle, exceeding what they thought the island had. They thought the island only had 22, but 46 showed up dead when they went back to the island. Well, it sort of worked. I mean, the bird population kind of came back to normal. The bald eagles never showed back up. But in 2009, the island was declared rat free for the first time in 229 years. There's never been any permanent settlements on this island. Number nine, Okonoshima Island, Japan. Okonoshima Island is about a 15 minute ferry ride from the Hiroshima region of Japan. This island doesn't have any towns or any permanent residents. I mean, other than the rabbit infestation they have. This island in World War II was home to a chemical weapon manufacturing plant. They made poison gas here. And now it's got a bunch of bunnies. Yeah, tourists go there because of the bunnies. The entire island is infested with bunnies. Now, no one knows for sure how the bunnies got there, and there's a lot of theories. The most common theory is they are descendants from test bunnies they had for the poisonous gas back in World War II. I saw a couple interviews, like, they have a museum there, and the interviewer was talking to the guy that's the head of the museum, and he said, no, that's a false rumor. It had something to do with an elementary school that was there way back when, and that's how they got there. The island is right there on the inland sea of Japan. There was a whole bunch of islands around there. But like I said, a lot of tourists go there to interact with the bunnies, and that's perfectly fine. It is forbidden to hunt or harm the bunnies. What I found interesting is they didn't even know the history of it. I mean, I'm sure Japan did. They were making the chemical weapons, but the whole story of the island wasn't really let out until 1988, kept a secret. If you do decide to go there, keep in mind they have restricted areas on the island for good reason. I mean, they tested chemical weapons here. Number eight, Devon Island, Canada. Devon Island is in Baffin Bay, not too far from Greenland. It's closer to Greenland than any populated part of Canada. And this place is uninhabited, and for good reason. It looks like Mars, really. It looks like the surface of Mars, if Mars had some snow. And polar bears, they'll eat you just for standing there. That's the thing about polar bears I hate. They don't need a reason to attack you, they just will. Funny how they're like that, I mean, they look so cuddly. Devon Island has an area of 21,000 square miles. It's also the 27th largest island in the world. It's actually just a little bit smaller than Croatia. They did have a very small settlement until the 1950s when the last resident left. Now, it's funny I say that it looks like Mars. They've actually had scientists set up like a base camp there to simulate what it's like to live on Mars. Yeah, but they haven't had any permanent residents there for like 70 years. 
Number seven, Cocos Island, Costa Rica. Cocos Island is located about 320 miles west of Costa Rica in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. This is a place you just can't show up and visit. You actually have to get permission to be a tourist here or some kind of scientist to do some kind of exploration. Costa Rica has park rangers which maintain this place and there's not much to maintain. They just leave it alone. Besides the travel hurdles you got to get through to get to this island, it has no place where you could really park a boat for any amount of time. There's no sheltered harbor or anything. You're exposed to the open ocean, and if you've ever been on a boat sitting still in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, it can get a little rough. The jungle is thick, and it's got some pretty sheer cliffs here, too, so it's hard to get around. There's no real paths or anything like that. They've had treasure hunters go there looking for pirate treasure. It's popular for divers who go offshore. There's plenty of sharks and reefs. It's a pretty interesting place, and I think that's because it's untouched. They've got a lot of flora and fauna there that you'll only find on Cocos Island because it's never been attached to the mainland. Yeah, this is one of those places that has all kinds of stories about pirate treasure buried on this island someplace. Now, they have no permanent residence here, but on occasion, Costa Rican park rangers will live on the island. But there's no towns, no cities have ever been put here. They don't even have a dock. Number six, Tetapare Island, the Solomon Island chain. Tetapare is the largest uninhabited island in the South Pacific. Up until a few centuries ago, Tetapare had residents. They had a few villages sprinkled around the island. And then for some unknown reason, they picked up and left the island 200 years ago. The descendants of Tetapare now live on different islands, but this one's just been abandoned since before the American Civil War. The Solomon Islands have decided to keep this kind of in its natural state. Therefore, if you want to be a tourist, you have to get the okay. Tetapare is also a sanctuary for the dugong. If you don't know what a dugong is, it is like a manatee. It's a relative of theirs. It's smaller. They get up to about 550 to 650 pounds, where a manatee gets up to about 1,200 pounds. They estimate there's only about 200 to 250 dugongs left in the world. Number five, the Phoenix Islands. The Phoenix Islands are a group of eight atolls and some submerged coral reefs sitting in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And they are officially part of the Republic of Kiribati. The Phoenix Islands protected area was established in 2008 and it's one of the world's largest protected areas. All but one of these eight islands is uninhabited. On Canton Island, there's a few families who still live there. The islands are Canton Island, Enderbury Island, Burney Island, McKean Island, Phoenix Island, which is also known as Rowaki, Sydney Island, which is also known as Manra Island, and Hull Island, which is also known as Orana Island. The other one is Nikamaru, Formerly known as Gardner Island, this is the one that a lot of people believe is where Amelia Earhart may have ended up. At one time, some of these islands were claimed by the United States as part of the 1856 Guano Islands Act. But in 1979, when Kiribati became independent, the United States signed a treaty with them that said they could have all the islands back except for Baker and Howland Island, which are part of a group known as the United States Minor Outlying Islands. These are the type of places you could land on and not see anyone for years. Number four, Auckland Islands, New Zealand. The Auckland Islands are a group of islands about 290 miles south of the South Island of New Zealand. And nobody lives here. They have a few islands out here like Rose Island, Ocean Island, Yule Island, Ewing Island. They got a group of rocks called Sugarloaf Rocks, and they have an island that they should send all their underachieving husbands to called Disappointment Island. They found evidence of Polynesian settlements on these islands, which would make it the most southerly settlements by Polynesians ever discovered. The uninhabited islands were rediscovered in 1806 by a whaling vessel who just kind of happened upon them. Nobody's ever really lived here since the Polynesians left. And they think that was in the 13th century. Number three, Gotska Sanden, Sweden. Gotska Sanden is literally translated into Gothlandic Sand Island. It is an uninhabited Swedish island in the Baltic Sea. Even though nobody lives here, there is a chapel on the island. It's a beautiful island and it's not too far from the mainland. I'm sort of surprised that there's not like a town or anything on this island. Probably has something to do with the fact that it's been a national park since 1909. The only real residents are a colony of gray seals and some rabbits. 
Number two, Clipperton Island. Clipperton Island is actually a coral atoll south of Mexico and west of Guatemala in the Pacific Ocean. It was named after a pirate, John Clipperton. He is the first person to actually step foot on the island, so he claimed it, he named it, and now it's Clipperton Island. A lot of people think Magellan went through here and discovered it first, but didn't get off to check out the tiny atoll. This atoll is just a circular strip of sand with some bushes and a few coconut trees. But what makes this one different is the inner part of the atoll is fresh water, and people have lived here before. The island had changed hands several times over the centuries, and for a very strange reason. Guano. Yeah, bird poop. They wanted out that bird poop. Back in the 17 and 1800s, there was a market for it. The French had this for a while, the United States had it for a while, and even the British had it for a while before Mexico decided they wanted it again. But since they were at a serious disadvantage against the British of the time, they knew they couldn't go to war with Britain, so they struck a deal. The British were allowed to get all the guano they want, and they just had to recognize Mexico's sovereignty. The British didn't care, they said fine, and that was that. Eventually the British decided it wasn't worth it, and they sort of abandoned the island, except for a caretaker and his wife. Mexico decided since it was abandoned, they could now take it over, so they sent some soldiers with their wives and kids to colonize Clipperton Island. There was about 100 of them. Things didn't go well. They lost contact with the mainland after being there a few years, and things got weird, really weird. People started dying, People started drowning, and then when there was just a few women and some children left, the only man on the island decided he was the king of Clipperton Island, and it was a reign of terror. After being treated horribly for about 18 months, the women kind of rebelled, and they killed him with a hammer. Now, in a strange twist, the same day they killed him with the hammer, they were finally rescued by an American ship that just happened to see the island and came in for a closer look. Nobody's lived there since. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. We'd love it if you went over there and subscribed. All right, on to number one. And number one, Jacko Island, East Timor. Jacko Island has no permanent residence, and that's because the locals think it is a sacred island. Sort of like the place the Brady kids would have to drop off an idol. Even though it is a sacred island and the locals don't live there, they encourage you to go camp. Explore the island. Just don't get eaten by a crocodile. Since 2007, Jacko Island has been part of a national park system. But if you do want to go visit, you better be able to swim or get a local to take you over on a boat. Just, you know, give them a time to come pick you up when you're all done seeing the island not being eaten by a crocodile. A lot of people that visit here are there for the scuba diving, snorkeling, whatever. It's not too far off the main island either. You could probably swim it if you got some good lungs on you. But if you don't, the local fishermen do kind of, you know, double as vendors and water taxis. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Have a great day. Be nice to each other.